Perfect. Thank you, Judy. Um, well, my name, of course, is Dan Siegel. I am a uh, MVP. Uh, many of you may know me as one of the maintainers for the PRISM library. Um, I've also got a number of other libraries that uh, I've authored, uh, and I am a Xamarin uh, consultant as well. Uh, today, we're here to talk about the mobile build tools. And uh, before I really get started, um, I want to talk about MS Build. Uh, and I'm not talking about the conference that we had a month and a half ago. Um, I'm more referring to that little thing uh, that does a ton of magic, but we don't know anything about. Um, uh, and, you know, with MS Build, you know, one of the things that people don't realize is that it's uh, very configurable. It has a completely configurable pipeline, uh, and it allows us to inject uh, tasks uh, during our build process to accomplish a whole variety of different problems that we may encounter. One of uh, the really neat things that it also does is it allows us uh, to inject those tasks uh, via NuGet. Uh, and some of the, the tasks that you may actually be familiar with uh, that are done this way are XAML G and XAML C from uh, Xamarin Forms. Uh, those are actually bundled as part of the Xamarin Forms uh, NuGet. And it got me thinking, uh, you know, how could I solve some of the problems that I have uh, in my DevOps experience from going from a brand new project to something that I can put up in VSTS uh, something I can put up in App Center and just have that that complete, um, you know, A to Z uh, experience without having to write all these different scripts. Uh, and so I started looking at MS Build for for really tackling that. Now, one of the the first problems that uh, I looked at was uh, app secrets, uh, and every app uh, has them, uh, and it, it can be a real challenge. Uh, for how to secure your code base. And what I mean by that is uh, keeping those secrets out of uh, Git. Um, now, the other day, I actually did a search on Google on this, and just this one search here uh, resulted in almost 2 million results for uh, different ways that people have to keep uh, an app secret uh, out of Git. Um, so, you know, the, I, I realize that there are probably a lot of people here today that have some very strong feelings about this, and there may be some others that are just completely lost on, on how to do all of this. Um, now, I, I had a few goals uh, for mobile build tools. Uh, the first thing was to keep it as simple as I could on developers, uh, to keep my DevOps process as simple as possible, and to eliminate uh, those tight couplings in my repository um, that I may have. Uh, now, one of those things, of course, is to exclude a client ID or a secret like my App Center secret, for example, um, but also to uh, reduce that coupling uh, between a back end URL that I might have, because maybe I want to do a build uh, that goes against my, uh, uh, you know, my, my dev API or my stage API versus my production API. Uh, and then there are some other things that uh, sometimes we want to include as well, like a control value, um, you know, and, and it could be a, a very simple numeric uh, value. You know, you, you might just have a, a value of two um, and, and you say, well, you know, th this value uh, is going to limit some, you know, uh, function that I have within my app. Um, but I want to keep that in, in a very, uh, easy to manipulate way. So if my boss comes to me tomorrow and says, you know, I don't want two, I want three, uh, I can just update that in, in one place and we're good to go. Um, now, one of the things that, that really made uh, DevOps a challenge, uh, and I think makes it a challenge for all of us, uh, is that mobile apps are not like a traditional uh, web API or a WPF app. Uh, where you can configure them at runtime. They have to be configured uh, at build because we have to package this uh, this app up and ship it off to the app store and somebody's gonna randomly download it, hopefully, and install it on their phone and it has to be good to go out of the box. There is no setup process really um, that, that you can do like you can do uh, you know on, on a web app or, or anything. Um, the other thing is we're, we're going to have values uh, that have uh, that you know have to be referenced in our code, um, you know, such as our app secret or our backend API. Uh, and again, we don't want to replicate that in, in a thousand places. 
Uh, we, we want one nice centralized place that we can reference, a, a strongly typed uh, class that we can use uh, throughout our code base. Uh, but we also have to consider um, what about our, our app manifest? Um, with our app manifest, we sometimes also include uh, a secret in there. And uh, one of the, the places that's a great example of this is actually with App Center distribution. Uh, in App Center distribution, uh, if you look at your info P list, you actually need to include an app secret. And uh, the mobile build tools uh, really has three MS build tasks that actually kind of uh, deal with this central problem. Uh, the first one is the template manifest task, and uh, that's going to handle, uh, you know, what we do uh, with our uh, our info key list or Android uh, manifest. We also have a uh, build host uh, secrets task uh, that handles uh, how to inject uh, our values uh, at build uh, versus on our machine. Uh, and then we have a secrets task, which uh, runs uh, basically everywhere, does the same thing everywhere. Uh, and that actually generates a, a secrets class uh, that we can use throughout our code base um, using a, a, a secrets JSON file. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about here is the uh, template manifest. Uh, and, uh, you know, a minute ago we, we looked at uh, the documentation site uh, for uh, App Center and, and, and doing the distribution. Um, and, and as great as that is, you know, we have to have some way of, of uh, executing that. So uh, with a templated manifest, uh, we have something uh, that looks kind of like this. And uh, the mobile build tools will go ahead and scan our uh, info key list and our app manifest. Uh, and it'll look for all those different tokens automatically. We don't have any configuration that we need to do. Uh, but if it recognizes this pattern here uh, that we have a token in the info P list, it's automatically going to uh, look at the environment variables uh, you know, uh, that are part of our build and uh, it, it's going to go ahead and grab them uh, and do that token replacement. Uh, the next thing is uh, the secrets. Now the uh, secrets uh, are defined completely by you, the developer. Uh, there is no right or wrong schema, or right or wrong naming convention, um, but uh, you can add as many as you want. Uh, all you need is a simple JSON file that looks something like this, uh, and uh, it's going to generate the the, uh, the secrets class for you at build. Uh, the build uh, host secrets task is going to look uh, for a certain pattern, and, and I'll kind of elaborate more on that a little bit later. Um, but it's going to look for a pattern uh, in the environment name uh, and generate a, uh, a secret uh, JSON file that looks just like this uh, on the build host. That way, the, the following task can go ahead and create the, the uh, class. Uh, so with that, I'm going to pause for just a second. Judy, do you uh, have any questions so far? We're looking good so far, Dan. Thanks. Uh, not a problem. All right. Um, the, the next issue that uh, that I have, and I know that this is probably uh, one of James Montemagno's favorite uh, topics, is uh, app versioning. Um, you know, I, I mean, this probably goes back to my early days as a, a C sharp developer, and, and and looking at you know uh, how, how am I developing, uh, whether it's a library or an application, how, how do I handle versioning? I and mean, versioning has always been a complex topic. Um, but there's no real good way uh, of incrementing versions out of the box. Um, App Center's built-in versioning works very well, uh, but it is a pre-build task. It's not uh, something that is handled during the build pipeline. Uh, so that means that uh, for something like the mobile build tools where we handle everything as part of our uh, build pipeline, uh, it's not going to work uh, because that info P list or uh, uh, Android manifest may simply not exist yet. Uh, you know, relying um, on whether you whether you're relying on App Center or VSTS, um, those build steps are are, are very custom, um, and they they don't address the issue of uh, how you also version locally. So, uh, one of the very neat things, and I, I know a lot of people. 
uh, like to use the uh, timestamps. Um, but with mobile build tools, you're versioning everywhere that you go in any environment. It doesn't matter whether you're using Jenkins or uh, AppVayor or VSTS or App Center, uh, or if it's just your local machine, uh, it's going to version absolutely anywhere that you are. Uh, and you can use either the build number on a build host uh, or the timestamp. Um, well, you can use the timestamp anywhere, uh, and that's all configurable um, by the mobile build tools. Now, I know Apple's official guidance that they have, and I have a link here as well uh, for where this came from. Uh, but the the key in in the statement is that uh, you may have uh, many builds for the same exact release that you intend to ship in the App Store. Uh, and what that means, or what they what they mean in that, is that you may be looking at shipping version 2.0.1, uh, like they say above, uh, but it may take five releases uh, for you to get an approval from Apple uh, for whatever reason. And in that case, they want you to still be able to ship 2.0.1 if that's your preference. Um, so they have two different, uh, numbers that you can increment, um, and, and both of these are handled automatically uh, by the mobile build tools. And again, this is at every single build because it's part of your build pipeline. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I, I tried to keep this as uh, simple as possible. Uh, so it is literally uh, as easy as adding one line to your CS proj, um, and that goes in the property group. Uh, of either your iOS or your Android project, uh, and it will go ahead and do that. And all I have to do is say I, I prefer the build number or I want the timestamp, uh, and that's all in the uh, docs on GitHub as well. Uh, and I could also add a second uh, um, property as well to say that I only want this uh, on a build host or I only want this locally. Uh, so you can really set this up uh, and customize it however you prefer. And I'll stop again, Judy. Did you have any questions there? I don't have any questions for you yet, Dan. But thanks for for asking. Okay. All right. Well, I, I know I'm I'm kind of flying through this. So, <laughs> um, now uh, th this is maybe a little less DevOps uh, for a second, uh, but uh, you know, for those of us that uh, you know. Remember uh, at Build, uh, Xamarin came out with uh, 3.0 for Xamarin Forms, and that introduced for the first time CSS support. And I know this has been a very controversial topic for for many people, uh, but uh, you know, for me, I like it. I, I think it's a fantastic way to style uh, a XAML um, or a uh, just an XML document in general. So. Um, Hey, Dan, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I did end up with a question on a slide sure. that you had, that one line of code. You said line, add just that one line of code. Sure. Uh, I think it was a slide back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question was, um, what about with Xamarin Forms? Would you need to add that for each platform project? Uh, right now, the, the only two platforms that are supported uh, on this are uh, Android and uh, iOS. Um, I'm certainly willing to take issues if there are platforms that people are looking to implement this on. Uh, you know, just let me know on, on GitHub. Great. He says that makes sense. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So getting back to uh, CSS and Xamarin Forms, um, the, the biggest issue that I've had with uh, CSS, and I think a lot of people uh, feel this way as, as well, uh, is CSS can be a little clunky, uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I might have uh, a color palette that I want to use in my app, uh, but I'm going to have to redefine that color in a variety of places uh, throughout my style sheet, and that's not a very good uh, experience if I if I want to change a value. Uh, so, one of the the great tools that people have been using in the web world for quite a while. Uh, is SAS, and so I thought, you know, why can't we also bundle uh, SAS uh, as part of the mobile build tools? And um, what we've uh, actually ended up doing here is you you actually have the legitimate SAS compiler 
uh, is now bundled in mobile build tools. So you don't have to install anything uh, except for mobile build tools in your, your project. Um, and uh, you get full SAS support and it's going to compile uh, at build. Uh, it's uh, actually been optimized. Uh, so that way it's not going to run if you haven't made any changes. Uh, so it'll kind of speed up your, your incremental builds a little bit uh, there as well. Uh, but using SAS, uh, you're going to be able to use those variables. Uh, you know, like if you, again, you have that color palette, uh, you can use Mixin. So if uh, there are certain properties that you want to include in multiple styles, uh, you can uh, define those and, and partials. There's a, a ton out there for uh, SAS, certainly. Um, and then the, the last thing is it adds a valid uh, CSS uh, syntax for Xamarin Forms. Uh, one of my biggest complaints for uh, CSS and Xamarin Forms has been that uh, it's simply not valid. Um, what I mean by that is uh, when you want to apply a style to any, say, page or button, uh, regardless of whether it's uh, a Xamarin Forms button or some custom button uh, that you're using, uh, you have to use an invalid syntax with a little caret uh, before the uh, type. Um, but again, that's not valid CSS, and as a result, uh, it is not supported uh, by the SAS compiler. So uh, what I've actually done is I've uh, enabled um, a syntax that makes sense, uh, where you can use uh, a selector, um, and we, we picked uh, uh, any or all uh, as the selector that you can use in CSS, and I'll show more on that uh, in, in an example a little bit later. But um, when it compiles, it's going to go ahead and compile that down. It'll minimize it and it'll do a regex replace. So uh, anywhere you have that selector, it's going to convert back over um, to that caret uh, version that, that Xamarin Forms like. So uh, you're just you're completely uh, good out of the box. You don't have anything that you really need to do. Uh, there's no files that are generated in your project cluttering everything up. You can keep it all nice and and uh, concise there. Uh, the next thing or the last real topic um, that I had is uh, artifact copying. And uh, what I mean by that is, is looking at your, your Android APK or uh, your iOS uh, IPA. And then there's also the symbols that are generated as part of, uh, part of your build. And, uh, uh, you know, they can be a little difficult for people to find. Um, some, you know, a lot of people I've talked to, either they don't know where those artifacts are generated uh, or there are just simply so many files that are uh, generated as uh, part of your build that uh, it can be very tedious to go into that folder and to find uh, where uh, those artifacts were generated. So uh, one of the things that you can do uh, is you can actually, uh, just by installing mobile build tools, is you get the benefit of any time that those artifacts are generated, they automatically get copied into an artifact folder uh, in the root of your solution. So wherever that solution, that .sln is, uh, there's going to be an artifact folder uh, that gets those uh, generated in there. So uh, when you're saying, hey, I need to uh, upload this to App Center or uh, I, I need to ship this wherever, uh, you don't have to go searching for it. It's right there uh, at your fingertips. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right, well, that, that's the end of my slides. So let me come over here. Um, and again, uh, everything is on GitHub, uh, so you can go to uh, GitHub uh, slash Dan Siegel Mobile Build Tools. Uh, there are a ton of docs on here. Um, you know, like I said, uh, this has kind of really grown over time. Uh, if you are writing uh, additional MS build tasks of your own uh, or you have some sort of condition uh, that you want, there are a number of properties that Mobile Build Tools adds for you. Um, it will help you to determine if you're running on Windows or uh, if it's a, a Unix-based uh, operating system like uh, OS X or Linux. Um, uh, it'll also tell you if a project is uh, iOS, Android, UWP, Mac, Tizen. Um, if you're running in uh, App Center, AppVair, Jenkins, or Team City, or VSTS, uh, or if it's just generically a build host, uh, there's a 
a lot that you can really do with that information uh, when you're writing your own uh, build tests. Uh, there's also a, a debug uh, property as well. Um, by default, you know, I think it's a, a pretty bad idea to uh, to expose any of those secrets as, as part of your build output. Um, but there are still things that we want to output. So uh, if you need to debug for any reason, you can always flip this to true uh, and it'll give you your unfiltered uh, uh, output. So if you want to see what, what was actually generated in that uh, secrets class that I mentioned before, um, that's the way to do it. Um, again, uh, you're going to get a static secrets class uh, that'll look something like this, uh, depending on uh, what you've put together in your JSON. Uh, I mentioned as well that everything comes in, um, you know, via an environment variable, um, and it's all configurable. And sometimes uh, I personally haven't run into it, uh, but uh, there can be times where you maybe want a uh, um, a secret that is generic to your shared code. Uh, and then you have another secret that is specific uh, to your platform project. Um, so you can you can define that uh, very easily in your build process simply by adding um, a prefix uh, to your environment variable. So uh, just kind of looking at this uh, uh, this class here. So where I had uh, app backend, uh, my environment variable uh, would be secret underscore app backend and then uh, it will automatically pick that up. So uh, as part of that build host secrets task that I mentioned earlier, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and look at uh, the, the fact that we had something with secret underscore and anything that starts with secret underscore, uh, we assume that goes into our shared project uh, and anything droid secret is gonna be uh, added to our Android, uh, so on and so forth there. Um, again, there are a lot of customizations that you can do uh, on the token replacement uh, and setting up uh, how you want uh, uh, your uh, app manifest to be protected. Uh, the way that, that I handle this uh, by default uh, is that I have a, uh, a build directory that is uh, in my solution root and uh, I de define that uh, there are certain naming conventions. So uh, my git ignore can just say generically uh, don't include my info p list don't include android manifest uh, because i haven't named something else uh, where it's templated um, and then when you look at my git repo uh, you, you'll kind of see and i'll kind of switch over here real quick and, and you'll see what that looks like uh, so i have this build directory and i have my android template manifest and build template uh, info p list uh, and again uh, so we, we have our template here for uh, App Center distribution. And if we look at uh, our actual platform project, uh, you'll notice that there is no info P list in here. Uh, and if we come over to Android and look in here, there's no uh, uh, Android manifest in here as well. Um, now this entire demo app, um, You'll notice that there is CI set up uh, as well with uh, App Center. Uh, so every build, uh, this is automatically handled. Um, let me ignore Benjamin here. <laughs> uh, but uh, we can look at uh, App Center's build. Um, and let's, if this will scroll for me. Okay, there is a lot in here. Um, somewhere we will find, okay. So we can see in here um, that it's looking at uh, my version, it's setting my version, all these different uh, things are in here. Um, And up here we have our uh, secrets test. So we can see uh, that our build host secrets generated our JSON file. And this was the output. And again, because we do not have uh, the debug, 
uh, enabled. Uh, this is all protected here. So uh, even if someone got a hold of uh, our build logs, they can help us out with our build logs, but uh, they're not seeing that sensitive information. So this is really, really perfect. Uh, if you have uh, tight security concerns in your company, for example, um, and maybe you trust your DevOps person to set up all kinds of things, but you only trust a manager, for example, uh, to actually know what the value is for, you know, uh, some client ID or some secret. Um, you can really, like I said, you can protect all of this very, very well um, and still have a lot of debug information here. Uh, for what was generated and uh, when and, and what the problems were uh, as part of your build. Um, and then uh, we have, like I said, uh, the SAS. If you want to know more about SAS, uh, you know, I definitely encourage you to uh, come here to the uh, SAS Lang uh, website. Um, but uh, any, are there any questions out there? Yes, Dan, you, you have a question okay. here. It says, sure. hi, Dan, how would you recommend managing variables or values that are different based on environments, like a URL or a secret that mm -hmm. changes from dev stage to, you know, a production environment? So, uh, again, I mean, that, that has to be done uh, as part of your, um, your build. So every build is going to be targeting one of those different environments. So... Um, just as an example here, I'll kind of look at my build definition. And you'll see my environment variable for this build definition specifically, uh, you know, I've protected again my, my app secrets. Uh, but I have this uh, endpoint for my app service in here. Uh, and I've defined uh, that this is where my backend uh, URI is. Uh, and I can change that on a different build. So, um, you know, one, one of the limitations, of course, that uh, App Center has is you can only have one build configuration per branch. Um, so if I have a dev branch, I can have that build configuration where I still have those same environment variables, uh, but I just change the uh, URI for my app service endpoint uh, to point at uh, dev or stage or production. Um, and then in my code base, I can simply point uh, at my secrets dot app uh, service some point uh, and, and that value is going to reflect uh, based on the build great that seems to have cleared it up thanks perfect perfect there okay. uh, any other questions yes yes there's another one um, does Azure have a, a similar um, a, a similar type service uh, a similar service to, to what exactly um, I'm guessing it would be your um, uh, build tools. Let me let me see if I can get a clarification on that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if it's similar to the build tools, I would say no. Uh, the build tools are, uh, like I said, they are extensions to MS Build itself. Uh, so this runs as part of MS Build in any environment. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you install this um, uh, via your NuGet manager. Uh, and uh, that's literally all you have to do. Uh, there's a little bit of customization, like I said, if you wanted to do uh, app versioning uh, or if you want to change uh, some default, uh, maybe you don't like my double dollar sign, uh, you know, default for uh, defining a token. Um, you can change that to whatever characters you want. Um, but uh, you, like I said, you, you can... Just install a NuGet and, and away you go. Uh, okay, Dan. The the question is, is does uh, Azure have something similar to holding app secrets? Yes, they do. You're thinking of the Key Vault. Um, and while that, that's great, uh, and I, I definitely entertain, um, you know, any kind of discussion on, on maybe how to integrate that. Um, but you have to determine, you know, um, how are you working with something like Key Vault uh, generically across the board? Uh, so how does it how does it work for your developers on their machine right from Visual Studio um, just as easily as it does in VSTS or App Center? Does that kind of answer the question for them? Hopefully. We'll 
we'll see if it. Yes, yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So I, I know we we've kind of blown through this a lot faster than I anticipated here. Maybe I should have breathed a little more. Uh, <laughs> but uh, are, are there any other uh, questions that that we have, or anything else that uh, anyone would like to uh, see? So Dan, this is Rob, by the way. Um, sure. When you and I were talking at the Build Conference, you were also mentioning mm -hmm. that uh, Prism is going to come out with new templates that are going to have some of the stuff built into the templates, correct? Yes. Actually, uh, just released that uh, last night, as a matter of fact. Um, I'd be happy to uh, kind yeah, of... Can you tell us a little bit about, about, about that? Uh, yeah. So there are a number of tools that are part of uh, the Prism template pack. Um, and you'll notice here that, uh, you know, if I click on my solution, I can see uh, that I, I can create icons. I can connect. Um, well, this is not going to got to come down here. Uh, I can connect it uh, right to uh, App Center, enable the mobile build tools in here. Um, there's a, a lot of different things I can do. Um, there are, let's see here. There we go. Uh, this shifted from the last time I had it open. Uh, <laughs> So I can set up a, uh, a connection with App Center and VSTS. Um, and let's see here. If I come so, into the, so yeah, the, sorry, go ahead. Let's start from the beginning, though. So what you're showing now mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. different template for Prism that also makes use of the mobile build tools. So if you just install yes. the mobile build tools, you're not going to get these various templates and IDE uh, integration yeah. points. But this is another yes. uh, possibility, correct? So th th this is out of the box. So if I install the, the Quick Start uh, Prism application, uh, you're going to get this out of the box. Uh, the other thing uh, that I was actually asked uh, about at Build was just a generic Xamarin Forms template uh, that does all of the wonderful things here, where uh, we can connect to VSTS, we connect to App Center, we have the mobile build tools installed, uh, everything is available out of the box. Uh, and you'll see here that I, I do have this App Center connected app, um, and that is available from the Prism template pack as well. And just so, kind so of, even if you're not using Prism, mm -hmm. you could use that template to create a new Xamarin Forms project that is going to integrate with the mobile build tools and integrate with App Center. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, so this is just a uh, a basic Xamarin Forms application. There's nothing really special about it. Um, except for the fact that this has been enabled with the mobile build tools uh, and uh, it connects to App Center and it connects to uh, VSTS um, as part of my new project uh, dialogue. So uh, just to kind of show this off here, we'll call this FooBar because uh, why not? Uh, and apparently I, I haven't configured this. So um, once I uh, add my configuration, uh, so I have to come in and uh, add a token uh, which I'm not going to do uh, on here, but uh, uh, once I do that, I, I'll actually be able to see uh, that, um, uh, you know, uh, what organizations I belong to. So if I want to do it to my uh, personal uh, account or if I want to do it to one of the organizations I uh, belong to, I can select an app that is already created in App Center or I can create one based on the name of my project that I selected. Uh, and again, I can select uh, from any number of VSTS uh, instances that I have set up. Um, and I, I can either select an existing project in repo or I can create a brand new one uh, based on the name of my uh, project as well. Uh, and that'll all be regardless of whether you're using Prism or just uh, plain Xamarin Forms. Okay, and the, the question here in the uh, questions window, and this is just to clarify Xamarin Forms and Prism and App Center for the solution template, correct? I'm sorry, say that one more time. It's Xamarin Forms and Prism and App Center. Yes. So it, the, the one that I, I, I opened up here, uh, this is only Xamarin Forms with App Center. Uh, and then if I uh, come back and I look uh, at the Prism uh, one, uh, this is actually going to be uh, with Prism and Xamarin Forms and App Center uh, if I choose. Uh, and again, that's all configurable. If I don't want to use 
uh, uh, App Center in this particular uh, template. I don't have to. Uh, in the other one uh, that I was just showing a, a minute ago, that's built specifically for App Center uh, if you're just using Xamarin Forms. Okay, I have another question. Um, this works with Visual Studio 2017 and Visual Studio for Mac? Right now, it's only Visual Studio Mac, which I know is the inverse of what we're used to, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I do plan on coming out with Visual Studio 2017 support for this as well. Okay, and uh, how do we get it and install it? And the other question is, what is the mm -hmm. URL of the PRISM template? Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand what, what the URL of the PRISM template, the, the entire uh, add-in. I'm sorry. So what? Uh, the uh, the entire uh, add-in for um, uh, for for Visual Studio Mac that that's all uh, private code. It's not publicly available on GitHub. There, it, it's such a vast code base, uh, and and there are so many different integrations that we've had to do that uh, that actually has had to come off of GitHub. Um, but the project itself, the the add-in is publicly available um well, i guess i should probably search it um so uh, it, it's going to be publicly available uh right from within um uh, visual studio um you know the uh, from the extension manager so it looks like i actually need to update because it looks like i'm on uh, uh 752 and uh, it's actually for 753 so uh, once you're updated to 753 uh, you should be able to install it automatically uh, from the gallery. Okay, they say got it. Is there an ETA for Visual Studio for Windows 2017? No, there is not. Um, I would say later this year, uh, probably fall this year, uh, is what I would shoot for. Okay, great. Any more questions for Dan? All right. So, Dan, this was a really great presentation. What is the sort of takeaway? What would you like us all to take away from this presentation? Well, the, the big thing I would say to, to take away from this presentation is uh, that if you really want to install or if you really want to accelerate your, your mobile DevOps and make it easy uh, because it is very tedious to go uh, from, from A to Z uh, in mobile development is you want to use the mobile build tools because you're going to protect uh, all of the, the different uh, sensitive variables that you have in your application. But, you know, like the question uh, earlier, you know, how do I handle something like, uh, you know, producing an app for development versus stage versus production? Uh, it, it's going to help you with all of those various tasks that uh, inevitably come up as part of your DevOps process. Uh, and, and that's what the mobile build tools are all about, is making uh, DevOps easy for, uh, for Xamarin applications. All right. So for those of us that are just sort of starting out on DevOps, where do we go to kind of get an action items list um, to get us started? To get you started, um, I, I would go to GitHub. Uh, and really just kind of take some time to go through this readme. It is rather lengthy. I don't want to go through all of it uh, right now, uh, but there's a, a lot here on how to set this up. Um, and you can look at, again, uh, this App Center demo. This is also available on GitHub, uh, and this kind of explains exactly how uh, I've done everything uh, and, and what I've shown uh, as well with uh, setting up your secrets how to do that in App Center and, and add uh, those variables. Uh, so uh, you can even um, fork the repo and set it up in, in App Center yourself just to kind of get familiar with uh, how to handle that DevOps process and, and how painless uh, it really can be where you're not creating a different build script for every project. Um, so that, that would be what I would suggest that people do when, when you really want to get started. Okay, and I have another question. If I use mm -hmm. the templates that you've built and I use mm -hmm. them on my Mac, can I mm -hmm. pull the solution over to Windows Visual Studio and continue there? 
Yes, absolutely, you can. Uh, the 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 projects themselves will build absolutely anywhere. Uh, the templates are uh, right now only in Visual Studio for Mac. Okay, can you show us the URL again for your GitHub? Uh, yeah. So the URL is uh, just GitHub slash Dan Siegel slash Mobile Build Tools, uh, and there is a link as well to the App Center demo as well on there. Thank <music> you.